Well, thank you for this opportunity. Uh, uh, I never get tired of telling this story. Um, Moosehead has been uh, our, our poster child, if you will, our flagship property now for several years, and uh, things just keep getting better there. Uh, but anyway, without further ado, let's move on. Uh, just in case I say something remotely uh, optimistic, <laughs> our lawyer insists I put this slide in. Uh, here's just a snapshot of the company where we're at right now with our, our current uh, uh, share position at just over 200 million. Uh, as Janet pointed out earlier, we just finished the financing uh, uh, spearheaded by, by Mr. Eric Sprott, who remains our largest shareholder at uh, just around 29%, I guess, uh, fully out. And we currently have a treasury now of uh, just over $14 million, which, uh, which should get us through the remainder of our 2022 uh, drill program at uh, Moosehead, where we're just about halfway through a 100,000 meter program. So looking for six to seven million for that. Plus, uh, we raised uh, we raised to five million uh, that closed last week to uh, help uh, push forward our, our mainly our joint venture projects with uh, with Benton that I'll get into uh, uh, just quickly towards the end. So we have two 100% owned projects. Uh, our flagship Moosehead project, obviously, is uh, our biggest newsmaker, and uh, the other 100% owned uh, project is the Fleur de Lis, which is up in the Bayvert Peninsula, and uh, it's chasing uh, Dalradian type uh, type uh, high grade organic gold. Uh, we have two properties on the Valentine Lake trend uh, that are optioned: uh, one to uh, Trans Canada Gold and our East Alder project, which actually. Uh, is close, much closer to Valentine uh, uh, um, <clears throat> than the uh, than the Crippleback property. Uh, option to Cantera Minerals, uh, and I mentioned we have uh, a JV with Benton. We've got three district scale projects, uh, including Golden Hope, uh, Gray River, and Kepenkek. Uh, I won't have time to get into all of those uh, ones today, but I will focus a bit on the Golden Hope, where we recently announced. Uh, a pretty significant uh, uh, lithium uh, discovery, kind of exciting. So here we are, uh, Moosehead, if you can see my cursor, uh, is in the uh, northeastern part of, of, of Newfoundland uh, on the, I guess, the uh, northeast end of the Valentine Lake, uh, Cape Ray uh, uh, structure. Um, it's got several names, uh, but uh, either way you term it, uh, it is it is really all about location and in Newfoundland if you're not on a big structure uh, you're probably not going to have much luck but uh, fortunately Newfoundland is blessed with uh, with several of these structures including where our Fleur de Lis project sits up here on the Bayvert line and our Kepenkek project sits basically on the northeast uh, extension of I guess the eastern part of the uh, Hermitage Flecture uh, in a grander scale of things. Our uh, Golden Hole project straddles the Bay Dest Fault System here in the south and the Gunflap Hills, which is linked over towards the Cape Ray property uh, and, uh, and our Gray River property uh, down at the south coast here, where we also had some uh, rather, I think, strong results from, uh, from drilling uh, from our program last fall. So, uh, infrastructure, um, probably the most overlooked aspect of, uh, of, of, uh, of most gold projects, I guess, is uh, where is it? And, uh, uh, well, we're very fortunate. Uh, Moosehead sits, it's cut by the uh, Trans-Canada Highway, or one hour drive uh, east of the assay lab and drilling company's home basis. Uh, the area has been logged off, so there's ample access to the four corners of the property. And there's a willing and, and able labor force uh, uh, in central Newfoundland. Uh, a, a, a lot of people were, have been actually in, in the mining business uh, uh, in, in several operations that uh, uh, took place uh, over the years. Uh, the mineralization at Moosehead is akin to uh, Fosterville type of, uh, of gold mineralization. And for those who don't know Fosterville, Fosterville is one of the flagship properties uh, of Kirkland Lake Gold, which is now, I guess, part of Agnico Eagle. Uh, down in Australia, uh, it's characterized by some very high grades and uh, a very distinct structural style. Uh, I think uh, companies in central Newfoundland have, have definitely verified the existence of, uh, of Fosterville lookalikes. Uh, our project, uh, Newfound Gold's uh, Queensway and Labrador Gold's Kingsway projects are all chasing this same style of mineralization. 
and I think the results to date from uh, from all of those camps certainly support the uh, the thought that we are indeed targeting uh, a Fosterville type type setting. Uh, we've been drilling for about three years. Uh, we've completed um, uh, almost 73,000 meters of core in total. Uh, we're halfway through a 100,000 meter current program, as I mentioned, and uh, we anticipate that to take us up with three drills uh, or four uh, on times uh, this year. Uh, to uh, to finish that uh, sometime in late summer, early fall, and basically get geared up again for, for the next round. The project had a history when we acquired it from Altius Minerals uh, in, in uh, early 2018, and um, the property came basically with a history of 100 or so drill holes uh, drilled over a 10 to 15 year period uh, through Altius' uh, joint venture partnerships with, uh, with several companies. And uh, basically, high grade was identified, but uh, uh, but structural complications. Uh, the fact that there's no outcrop as well doesn't uh, doesn't help uh, trying to unravel things. But uh, uh, it was always a, a bit of a challenge for companies to basically string uh, a few good holes together. So, um, but fortunately, um, they did leave one uh, very interesting target untested, uh, and it was the only deep hole. If you look at the map on the bottom, you'll see this uh, MHO315, the only hole drilled below 200 meters vertically cut uh, nine ounces over half a meter and was never followed up. So this was where we, we immediately set to work and basically our first drill hole was targeting the up dip of that and we cut uh, almost 12 meters of 45 grams and uh, yeah, and we've, been, and we've been busy ever since. So this is a pretty typical look of the high grade veins. You see white quartz uh, with blue gray mineral here called boulangerite, uh, which is a lead antimony sulfur salt. And antimony is also a very key uh, pathfinder metal at, uh, at Fosterville. Uh, and I understand as well at, uh, at Newfound's property with some uh, nice uh, you know, splashes of visible gold uh, thrown in. So when we see boulangerite, we generally start to see the grades uh, picking up. Uh, so this is an excellent example of, uh, of what we have there. So we've identified uh, basically four zones of uh, new mineralization. Um, the only uh, area that really was drilled to any kind of uh, uh, sensibility was the western trend and this was what Altius had, uh, had focused on with their partnerships. Uh, so the eastern trend is where our, our main our big discovery hole came from and where we've been focusing a lot of our attention as well. Uh, the footwall splay and 75 zones uh, which appear to be splays off of the main eastern trend and eastern trend extension. Um, we've also now extended it down to the south pond area uh, where some uh, good results came out uh, last fall in, in the 344 zone and as well something new that we'll be kind of pushing forward uh, this uh, this season will be the 253 zone where we found uh, uh, a pile of uh, quartz boulders actually up in this area here uh, we actually got them, we think anyway, sourced uh, in, in a couple of drill holes uh, uh, down to the south here. So uh, again, um, one drill basically will be focused on the eastern trend area. Another drill will be focused on the eastern trend extension down to the 344 zone. And uh, one drill will actually be doing a bit more wall catting around. Uh, we've got a lot of untested targets that sit on the property. And um, we've probably been uh, a bit uh, a bit slow in, in getting to those, but uh, when you're getting good results in the eastern trends and, uh, and, and environs, it's it's hard to stop. So, uh, but yeah, we will be doing some more reconnaissance type uh, work this year. Our last uh, news release featured some pretty good holes. Um, basically, what you're looking at here is the eastern trend. This is a section that you see here. So. What we're doing basically is finally putting you know some good continuity together here with some of these intersections uh eight grams over five meters here in hole 63 which was a historical hole uh we put in i think in 2019 uh more recently of course we've got uh, you know uh, 4.8 meters of uh, just over 20 grams from hole 345 but i guess the story here is the fact that you know, uh, really good intersections. And the deepest hole actually on this section cut uh, uh, 10 grams over 3.8 meters and is still open. So uh, the blue lines here are, are what you'll be seeing for 2022 proposed holes uh, from the barge because uh, North Pond sits here. 
Uh, these are the holes, all these holes here are, are drilled from the barge, which has been a, a, um, basically a, a real good story uh, for, from our perspective, drilling off some really nice high grade uh, close to surface. Here we have uh, hole 342, which is just off this section, by the way, it's just out of the page here a little bit, five and a half meters of uh, 56 grams, including three meters of 100. So uh, again, just some spectacular grades. Uh, quickly on to our um, joint venture with Benton. I'm really only going to talk about one project uh, now. That's the Golden Hope. Uh, Golden Hope started out life, uh, and it still is, uh, a very strong and promising uh, gold target. Uh, I mentioned uh, the, the Bay Dest Fault, which basically is linked down to the Hope Brook, uh, uh, past producing Hope Brook gold mine area, which is now being advanced by Big Ridge Mining uh, with about a million ounces in, in resources. Uh, as well as the northern part of the property, which is uh, targeting a structure called the Gunflap Hills Fault, which is linked to the same feature that hosts uh, the Cape Ray and Valentine Lake deposits. Uh, Valentine Lake would be just off the map here. So anyway, um, when you send good prospectors into the field, good things can happen. And that's exactly what happened with uh, with. Um, with Golden Hope. Uh, we turned over some uh, some pretty interesting uh, <laughs> um, dikes, uh, pegmatite dikes that carry uh, uh, relatively robust values in uh, in lithium. And here you see basically a piece of the uh, discovery outcrop that runs just under 2% uh, Li2O. You see the uh, nice green uh, spodumene crystals there and the gray quartz uh, and feldspar matrix. And again, just a, just a handful of some of the samples that we've uh, uh, come up with over, I think it's a two kilometer, uh, just over two kilometers of strike length uh, and almost a kilometer or more um, in terms of its cross strike potential. Uh, this is MAG uh, with the surface sampling as we have it so far. Uh, through literature searches, we're finding references to pegmatite dikes up to six kilometers away from this area. So we've got a lot of, uh, in fact, there's at least 20 uh, uh, references to, uh, to dikes that we have to follow up on in the spring. So we're waiting for the snow to melt to get out there. Uh, we just finished uh, uh, our, our program, uh, our, our rec reconnaissance, uh, sorry, uh, uh, program drilling uh, just a little while ago and put out the first results from that program uh, uh, last week. And uh, we were very pleased to see you know, values, uh, you know, in, in the greater than 1% range. Uh, in fact, the uh, the dike that we intersected uh, cut uh, 8.4 meters thickness, probably close to true thickness, and uh, it averaged just under 1% Li2O uh, with up to 1.76% in, in, in selected samples within that. So again, just, just very pleased uh, uh, with that to basically verify uh, what we were finding at surface. And for those that missed the uh, webinar uh, seminar series last week, I gave a presentation as part of the government's um, uh, winter uh, winter talk season. Uh, this is what the stuff looks like in, in drill core. You see here these pale green, and they look like minute rice. That's the only thing I can think of when I look at that. Uh, grains of minute rice uh, in the uh, in the uh, in the pegmatite dike and. Uh, uh, yeah, this is this is part of the 8.4 meter intersection that uh, that we reported on last week. So we're going to go back. Uh, we're going to put in a camp and uh, and drill probably 25 or or 30 more holes uh, in the next round and uh, and see what we come up with. Uh, we've only basically just scratched the surface here. I think uh, we may have tested 100 meters of strike length. Uh, and certainly only about the same in, in the across strike uh, distance. So. We, we, we basically drilled 5% of, of what we know to be, uh, you know, uh, uh, prime uh, pegmatite dike area. So uh, quite exciting and, um, and lots more news to come out of this. So, and I'll leave it at that. Um, and I hope uh, you took something away from this. Uh, thank you.